If you are not watching this in high quality already, please click the link Watch in High Quality at the right bottom of this video. Hello, this is Ranier Torenbeek and welcome back to the presentation about benchmarking OMG DDS. In this last part, I'm going to create and run for you an example DDS touchtone scenario. The scenario will contain two transceiver transponder pairs running at 1000 Hz sending 100 bytes messages, one of the two pairs sending the samples at a high priority. At the same time, a transmitter receiver pair will be generating background load by sending messages of 500,000 bytes at 10 Hz, resulting in a 5 megabytes per second background load. The goal of this scenario is to measure determinism under a heavy background load, to determine the impact of information priority while keeping application threads in time sharing class. A good DDS implementation should show that high priority messages will have a lower jitter even though they were sent using the same threading priorities. With Touchtone this scenario can be created in many different ways. I have selected the situation where only two Touchtone applications are running, one with ID number 30 containing two transceivers and a transmitter, and one with ID number 40 containing two transponders and a receiver. The second transceiver transponder pair is sending samples with a high transport priority QoS value of 100. All the other entities are using default QoS settings. Deployment is quite easy. Two different Linux computing nodes called perf1 and perf2 are connected by means of a gigabit ethernet switch. The OpenSplice DDS middleware has been configured to contain two different transport priority channels for the desired results. In this demo I will show you how to play a scenario like this using DDS Touchtone. On Windows I will use the OpenSplice DDS Tuner tool to create a scenario. I will then transfer it to a Linux cluster where I will replay the scenario for the results. The first thing to do is to start the recorder. I will use it in verbosity mode. I will give it a ID of number 1 and I will name the result file hi demo.dat With the OpenSplice tuner, I will create a reader-writer pair for the recorder command topic. And I will use that writer to control the recorder. Resizing it a bit. What we see here is a set of commands that can be issued to the recorder. In fact, we're not really issuing a command, but we're just sending a topic, and the recorder picks it up and inter interprets it as a command. So I can start recording here now by selecting the record uh, enumeration. I insert value 1 to address this specific recorder ID, and I do a write. We see that the recorder has received the command and is now recording. Offline I have created a set of writers and readers for every QS topic and dev topic. I will be using these for creating a skeleton for our scenario file. As you might recall, I used IDs 40 and 30 for the different touchstones, so I'm going to send out QS topics to these touchstones now. I'm using group ID 40 for the receiver QS topic, 30 for the transceiver QS topic, Forty for the transponder QS topic, thirty for the transmitter QS topic. I have done the same thing for the receiver definition topics and all the other definition topics, so creating default values again, right, forty, thirty for the transceiver, forty for the transponder. 30 for the transmitter. Switching back to the first desktop, we see all the recorded messages. Finally, I'm going to stop the recorder here. 
Recorder stopped with recording and have it quit. Now let's take a look at the recorded file. It's called hypriodemo.dat. In this file we see eight different lines, each corresponding to a write action I did with the tuner. The command kind can be seen in the second column, where we recognize the four different dev topics and the four different cost topics I wrote. Also there is some timing information showing when I did the write actions, some information about IDs, we recognize the 30s and the 40s that I used, and a bunch of zeros for the, the, for the QoS settings and the timing and message size settings. So far this is just a skeleton scenario file. I will now edit it offline to get the desired scenario that I just presented to you. Okay, I'm done. Let me give you a quick explanation of what I did. I reordered the lines and I introduced a new transponder transceiver pair by duplicating some of these lines. So these are new and these are new. You see 12 lines now in total. I corrected the timing so that everything will be produced quickly after each other. And I replaced many of the zeros by some sensible values to create the scenario that we were looking for. The transmitter is sending out messages of 500 bytes, 500,000 bytes, one message per burst, one burst every 100 milliseconds. So that adds up to five megabytes per second. And the transceivers are sending out 100 bytes messages every one millisecond. The results are reported every 5,000 milliseconds. Everything is ready to go to the Linux box now. I'll just use copy paste and I have created a link to my Linux box in the meantime where I manually edit this text file. Offline I prepared this box so OpenSplice is already running and the environment has been set. So all we have to do now is start the Touchstone application. I'm using the C version here. And I'll do the same on another box that I prepared, Performance 2. Also on the second box I will start the Watcher tool, which will give the output of the different report topics that have been created. Finally, I will start the recorder to replay the scenario that we just edited. It shows some messages about definition topics being produced. And in the meantime, we will see the results appear in the lower box. I will hold the video in a moment to exactly analyze what's going on. I have stopped the touchstones and selected a suitable part of the output for analysis. First of all, we see that the induced load indeed is 5 megabytes per second, as measured by the receiver. Secondly, we see transceiver number one, uh, sorry, number zero, which was sending with a regular transport priority, measuring round trips of 300 microseconds with deviations of 500 microseconds. Finally, the high tri transport priority transceiver which shows similar round trip times, but has much less jitter. Keeping in mind that all threads were running at time sharing scheduling class, and that we didn't change anything about the threading priority, it is interesting to see how in this case OpenSplice implements the transport priority outside the application process space. This is just one example of what you can do with Touchstone and how you can build your own scenarios. If you're interested in trying this yourself, please take a look at the SourceForce project called DDS-Touchstone or send an email to dds-touchstone at prismtech.com.